You struggle with hitting in MLB The Show 24. By the end of this video, I guarantee you will be a better hitter. In this video, I'm gonna touch on a wide variety of topics, including different methods to help you stop chasing balls out of the zone, making better contact, strategies that you can implement in ranked seasons, BR, or events, as well as how to pick up on tendencies from your opponent. This is going to be for every level of MLB The Show player, whether you've just opened the game for the very first time in the series, or you're a 10-year veteran. I guarantee you there will be something in this video that's going to improve you at the plate. Let's get into it. Before we go anywhere, we need to touch on settings, specifically your hitting camera. There is essentially really two that I would recommend. However, like many things in MLB The Show, there are a lot of things that are going to be personal preference. For some specific tips that I'm going to show you, however, you're really going to want to use Strike Zone. So the reason why I like Strike Zone 1 is because it eliminates a lot of the stuff that is going on. Many things that when you first initially start playing MLB The Show is there's just a lot of stuff to pay attention to and stuff that will take your focus off of the actual pitch. Strike Zone 1 really just gives you the bare bones. You versus the pitcher. Now again, this will come down to personal preference, but as you can see, you want to stay Strike Zone, Strike Zone 2, where you can see a little bit of your batter, as well as Strike Zone High. Those are the, really the only ones that I would recommend if you are trying to get better, especially online. There are a lot of players that like to have a little bit more immersion. Again, it's all personal preference, but in my opinion, if you are trying to get better behind the plate, you really need to be using Strike Zone. Now, when it comes to the other settings, here's what I would recommend. Your swing input should be buttons. Anything else would be strictly for offline. You will have a much more difficult time in anything other than buttons. For a hitting interface, use zone. And then lastly, your PCI. This is largely going to be personal preference. Here is what I would recommend though for everyone. Having your PCI anchor set to free. What your PCI anchor will allow you to do is with the left stick, move to wherever you wanna set up. Then click in the left thumbstick and it will lock there. So if you are having a hard time catching up to a fastball up and in, you can set your PCI, move it up to the top left, click in L3, and now you've got your bat locked into that zone. This can be for any area, but having the free PCI anchor will allow you to move up higher into the different corners of the actual strike zone. If you've got it set to preset, you'll notice that it is a little bit more limited when it comes to getting to the edges of the strike zone. Then lastly, like I mentioned, personal preference. I like the PCI center to be the bat. This was introduced last year. Not sure why, but it has definitely felt better than the other options. I keep the PCI inner to basic, no PCI outer. You don't want to have to worry about that. Again, removing the clutter from your screen. The color is again totally up to you. And then when it comes to the fade out, I remove the inner and outer. Again, when the pitch is coming in, less stuff on the screen. But this is all going to be personal preference as you get more attuned to the game. I think the easiest way to go about all these tips is to put them into a rating. So in ranked seasons, if you fall into a certain rating, these are the ones that I think would benefit you the most. Let's start at the bottom. Zero, you've just picked up the game for the first time. Hell, even offline, you are struggling. Let's start at the very bottom. If you struggle hitting the ball, I'm just saying getting contact on pitches that you should be putting in another hemisphere, that needs to be addressed first. Any other tips are going to be way above and beyond if you can't hit the balls that you should be nuking. I'm not talking about sinkers that are in on the hands or fastballs that are up and in in the strike zone. I'm talking about a fastball belt high or a slider that just hangs right in the middle. If you can't hit those, here's how to fix that. What I want you to do is stop pretending the PCI is the bat. You heard that right. You want to pretend that the PCI is the catcher's glove. Now, the reason why this is going to assist you is because what's going on is your brain and your eyes are following the ball, but your hands aren't following through what your brain is telling it to do. Sounds way over the top. Literally, that's what's happening. If you are swinging and your PCI isn't following all the way through, that's why you're missing. Your left thumb stops moving when you are going to swing because your brain is having a hard time doing two things at once, especially on pitches that are right down the so when you pretend that the PCI is the catcher's glove, you will be a little bit later, you'll be a little bit slower, but on lower difficulties like veteran and even the early stages of all-star, outside of the flamethrowers, taking that extra half second to finish putting the glove where the ball is ending up will result in actual contact. Whether that's a foul ball sometimes or not, you should never be missing those pitches specifically. That tip alone will help newbie players faster than any of the other tips I'm going to talk about. 
about. Just try it. I also want to mention that if you struggle with a specific situation, for example, I struggle lefty on left for some reason. So a lefty batter up against a lefty pitcher. I don't know if it's because I'm righty in real life, but for whatever reason, it just feels weird. Or when you are playing against a pitcher that has a really messed up delivery, like a submarine pitcher, they usually don't fire the ball 102 miles an hour. So you can use this method to really help you get settled and make more contact at the plate. Once you are able to beat the CPU on veteran, essentially every time that you play them, it's time to start addressing the next thing that newer players struggle with. That's reading balls and strikes. This doesn't apply to just newer players, but one of the biggest deficiencies that players have in this game is that they lack patience. And the second that you are impatient and you want to hit a home run on the next pitch, regardless of where it is, if you're matching up with someone that has any sort of idea on how to read their opponent, you're not seeing the strike zone for that entire game. Hand up if you've had a game where you've just swung at everything, regardless if it's at your head or not. So let's fix that. Remember I said to use strike zone one? A couple years ago, I came up with something called the crossover method. This is by far the best received tip I've ever had in a video. The amount of comments that I've gotten about this helping players is off the charts. Here is how it works. So if you struggle reading balls and strikes, you've got to worry about up, down, left, and right. We're going to take a situation, one of the most common, a righty batter against a righty pitcher. This tip applies to any situation, but this is the most common. Notice how in strike zone one, the pitcher lines up perfectly with the middle of the strike zone, much like all of the other views, but this one is the most in your face. What I want you to do is to not pay attention to the ball when the ball is released for the first five to 10 frames. What you wanna do is focus on the pitcher. Sounds crazy? Trust me. When you do this, you will eliminate all pitches that are way inside, as well as all of the pitchers that are way outside. Because in the righty on right situation, if the ball does not cross over the pitcher, it is either way too inside for you to do anything with, or it is more than likely going to be painted in an area where you are going to get weak contact unless you are waiting for that specific pitch. Conversely, in righty on righty, if the ball crosses over in front of the pitcher very early, you know that it is way outside. By focusing on the pitcher and the ball coming into view, you effectively take away the left and right concerns when it comes to is it a strike or not. And if the ball crosses the pitcher right in that middle release, you know that you've got a pitch that is at least in the middle, regardless if it's high, low, whatever, you are going to have far more success on on those types of pitches than trying to catch up to something inside or laying off and trying to go the other way on something outside. This will take a little bit of getting used to, but for newer players especially, if you can't lay off balls out of the zone, the crossover method is what you need to start doing until you can start picking up and you get a little bit more advanced in your gameplay. Those two tips alone will get you into the 200 range of rank seasons. Because it's on a lower difficulty and a lot of the players that play down there are like-minded and they're just throwing whatever with no strategy, the crossover method can get you well into the 200s. After that, you need to have an understanding of what all of the pitches do. So this will come with playing the game more. So for example, understanding that the sinker will run back inside towards the arm side of the pitcher, or a cutter will move slightly away from the arm of the pitcher. Those are things that you need to know once you get into this range, knowing that a slider is going to break away from the pitcher's arm side. A change up will have the bottom drop out of it, and a two seam fastball will again have a little bit of movement towards the arm side of the pitcher. Once you've got an understanding of how these pitches work, it won't take you very long because you're going to be throwing them as well. You want to make sure that when a new pitcher comes into the game, especially if you've never seen that pitcher before, take a pause and look at his pitch mix. If you don't know what that pitcher has, then you're legit just guessing on top of the game already being difficult for you. You're now trying to guess where a pitch is going. So please take your pause. It takes maybe 10 seconds most to take a look at a pitcher's pitch mix. Also pay attention to the highest pitch pitch, that is going to be the one that is set to X or A. And as those pitchers stay in a little bit longer, players have a tendency to eventually start clicking those every once in a while. So just make sure that you know his pitch mix. The next thing that we've got to address is slamming your PCI. As you get into a little bit higher difficulties and really touch all-star, one of the main issues that players run into is that they'll read a pitch, see where it's going, and then the last second slam the PCI down, up, left, or right, way over correcting. And some players will actually struggle with pitches 
is right down the middle because you can't lay off your PCI. So another tip that I gave to players a few years ago that I'm still getting comments on in old videos is using the claw method. If you're old like me and you played FPS games in the time before scuff controllers, the claw method was fantastic until we all got arthritis. So what you're gonna do is take your thumb, place it below your left thumbstick. Take your index finger, your pointer finger, and place it above the thumbstick. Why this is going to help you so much is because it makes the PCI movement softer. This will stop you from slamming your PCI out of the strike zone, something that you never want to do in the first place because you're really never going to get a hit there anyways. Feels a little awkward at first? I promise. The softer PCI on top of all of the tips we've talked about already, huge game changer when it comes to your gameplay. Alternatively, you can use things like Control Freaks, for example, but this is completely free and extremely effective. Now, if you follow all of those tips, these will bring you into the 500s easily in rank seasons, right in that meaty middle of all-star. Once you get above that, you need to start implementing a strategy when you play rank seasons. Here is what I find successful. Now, obviously this is gonna be a little bit different for BR as well as events because those are three inning games and you really got to attack early on. But in rank seasons, what I do is I take as many pitches as I possibly can. Once I get to two strikes, I sit one pitch, whether that's a fastball, up and in, it'd be a breaking ball kind of in the middle of the zone. If I don't get that, I don't swing. Here are the things that I'm looking for. Is he aggressive? Meaning that are the majority of his pitches in the strike zone. When he gets me to two strikes, does he stay in the zone or does he throw some junk trying to get me to chase? Conversely, when he gets behind in the count, does he throw a fastball over the plate to try and get back in it or does he keep up trying to hit the edge and just trying to continue to get something to chase? Even if you strike out all three times, you're really not showing your opponent anything. It is a long game. It's nine innings. Now, once you've gone a full inning, seeing what, first of all, your opponent's arsenal is and what some of his early tendencies are, then it's time to start sitting one pitch. So throughout the at-bats, he is going to throw a pitch that is the exact same in the same spot no matter what. Whether that's a fastball up and in or a slider that is really in the zone, essentially you want to just pick one. Then what I will do is I will wait to two strikes and sit one specific pitch. Again, you're picking up the tendencies of your opponent. You're going to see many players have the same kind of general idea given the situation that they're in. The more and more bats that you get into a game, you can start sitting one pitch on the first pitch of an at bat. This obviously becomes much more difficult when players start painting the corners and really don't give you anything in the meat of the strike zone. But at some point, you are going to have to be aware of one of the pitches that they are trying to utilize and take advantage of. This is is especially true as you get closer to Hall of Fame. When you play an opponent that's roughly around the same skill level as you, the jump in difficulty will often result in one nothing games where basically you're just all pitching whatever and you're just waiting for someone to fall into a home run. In these instances when either you're really struggling and so is your opponent, just sit one pitch. At some point, they are going to give you the same one. Some very common ones, like I said, is the fastball up and in, but it is all going to depend on what your opponent is using as well as the actual pitcher that he's got on the map. Also, please utilize the pitching analysis that is in the pause menu. I feel like a lot of newer players don't even know this exists, but if you cannot hit a pitcher and it's been three or four innings and you can't pick up that pitch that he's doing regularly, go and take a look at the pitch analysis, switch it to the same handed player that you've got up at the plate and take a look at what he's thrown regularly. You'd be surprised. In this instance, facing Randy Johnson, he has thrown the up and away fastball in and at bat against almost every right handed batter that I've had. Another strategy that I'd like to follow is to get to 15 pitches an inning as many times as I possibly can. A couple reasons for this, but obviously in ranked seasons, you want to get into a player's bullpen sooner rather than later. But more importantly, you want to get to the point where the pitcher that he's using has a little bit less energy or confidence. It's also a very good rule to stop you from having those innings where you're swinging at everything, whether it's in the zone or not, you're becoming impatient. There's nothing worse than having a one, two, three inning where your opponent through three pitches. And again, that happens quite often. So what I like to do is to try and force myself to take as many pitches as I can to get to 15 in an inning. And again, it also reinforces just seeing as many pitches as I possibly can. Your eyes are going to have an easier time picking up pitches the more that you see them 
and just pay attention simply to them as opposed to worrying about hitting every single pitch that you get. Now, once you have implemented all of these tips, the strategy, claw method, master the crossover, all of it, you will eventually hit a plateau. Once you get into the higher difficulties and you start going up against players that are pretty good at the game, you need to be able to see the ball as much as possible, especially when they start painting the corners. So here's what I would recommend. Implement the same strategy, all of it. However, you want to stare at the pitcher's release point. In the first few pitches of a new pitcher coming into the game or the start of a game, stare at the release point. Then during their windup, completely ignore the pitcher entirely. What this will do is it will have you picking up the ball a few frames earlier than if you were to try to follow the pitcher all the way through the motion. Stare exactly at where that pitch is going to be released, and this is going to help you pick up the ball, especially as you get into higher difficulties. The last thing I want to bring up is that MLB relies on your monitor more than any other sports game. For example, if you're someone who plays the game very casually, you play on a 60 inch screen in your living room, because it is so frame by frame, you are going to be at a little bit of a delay going up against someone that's got a zero milliseconds response time gaming monitor. So the show zone has many different options for you, whether you want to go all out or go for the cheaper options. Just want to throw that out there. This is the one game where you are really going to notice a difference when you switch to a gaming monitor. Let me know if these tips helped you in the comments section down below and be sure to tune into my live streams. I go live every single day at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Good luck and I'm gonna be the show 24.